Hello and welcome to another video on factorising quadratics. And in the previous video, if you watched that, I introduced you to this concept of using this sum product rule to factorise quadratics that look something like this. And I went through how we factorised. I didn't explain to you why it works. So in this video, I'm going to go through why this sum product rule works. Uh, but before we do that, let's just first of all do one more example just to um, refresh your memories on how we factorise this. So remember, whenever we're factorising a quadratic that looks like this, we want to uh, identify two numbers that have a sum of this number and a product of this number. So two numbers that multiply together to get 20 and add together to get 9. So if you think about the uh, factors of 20, first of all, we've got 1 and 20, we've got 2 and 10, and we've got 4 and 5. So these are all the factors of 20, but which one of these pairs gives us a sum of 9? Well, hopefully you can clearly see that it is these two numbers here. 4 plus 5 does indeed give us 9. So to factorise this quadratic, we would write x plus 4 in one set of brackets and then x plus 5 in our other set of brackets. All, we've done, all we're doing is putting these numbers into these brackets. And this is our answer. So we factorised this quadratic. And like I said before, you can always check your answer by expanding out and you should be left with this original expression here. Now you might be wondering, well, why does this work? And it's not just magic how it works. There is maths behind it. And that's what I'm going to try and explain to you now. So to do this, I'm going to work backwards. So we're going to start off with our factorised expression and we're going to work backwards to get our original quadratic. So instead of using 4 and 5, because these are just arbitrary numbers that I've used, uh, to prove this always works, if we just use some variables to represent our numbers, so let's use a and b. So instead of writing x plus 4 and x plus 5, I'm going to write x plus a, represent one of my numbers, and if my other number is b, I can write x plus b. B. Okay, so this is our factorised expression. This is a, just a general factorised expression. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards. So I'm going to expand these brackets and I should be left with uh, an expression that looks something like this. But instead of these numbers, I'm going to have A's and B's. So let's use the FOIL technique. So X times X is X squared. And then X times B is just BX or XB. It doesn't matter which way around we put it, but if I put it in alphabetical order, bx, and then a times x is ax, and then a times b, well that is just ab. And I can simplify this slightly, so if I keep the x squared, but instead of writing bx plus ax, I can factor out an x from both terms. So if I factor out an x, then I'm just left with b plus a, that is plus b plus a, and then I've just got that AB hanging out the back there. And now hopefully you can see that this expression here is very similar to this expression here. Now the only things that have changed, the x squared is the same. But instead of 9x, I've got B plus A. Instead of 20, I've got AB. And hopefully you can see that AB, that is just A times B. So that is the product of our two numbers. So that's the product of A and B. And then a plus b, or b plus a, doesn't matter which way around we put it, that is the sum of our two numbers. And that's where it comes from. So you can see that this 9 is a plus b, and this 20 is a times b. So we need to work out which numbers, which two numbers, a and b, when we multiply them together we get 20, and when we add them together to get 9. And that's where it comes from. And that's how we established that the two numbers were 4 and 5, because 4 times 5, if this is the product, 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 plus 5, or in this case 5 plus 4, gives us 9. So hopefully this short video just gave you a better understanding of where this sum product rule comes from when we're factorising quadratics. And it doesn't just work for integers, we can put any numbers in here, so even if you've got fractions or decimals or even irrational numbers, uh, this sum product rule will still work for all of those different scenarios. Thanks for watching.